Hey guys, today the project that we're working on, I'm so excited to bring to you, is a countertop set that's going into an RV. We've teamed up with Flipping Nomad, a mother-daughter team who now do beautiful RV restorations. We've built this countertop, they've already sent us their inspiration of what they want the top to be, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so our countertops are built out of three quarter inch MDF. We've added an inch and a half drop edge where we've routered with a quarter inch roundover bit, the both the top and the bottom. What this does is allows the epoxy to roll over and not build up surface tension and really helps to get a very smooth edge. Also, when we round over the bottom, what happens is the epoxy doesn't form a line here or a ridge. The drip goes all the way down and holds on underneath here. That way we get a very, very smooth underneath as well. So we have our main countertop and we also have a little flip up countertop that the uh, RV owners can use if they need extra uh, space. We're gonna pour them as one big piece so that our pattern is very symmetrical. All right, so we're gonna get ready to start mixing our product. Because it's getting cooler outside, we like to start warming up the epoxy about two hours before we know that we're gonna pour. Uh, I try to get my epoxy to be at least 72 degrees. Now, when you put it in front of a space heater, make sure you turn the space heater down so that it's not really hot because you don't wanna heat up the epoxy too fast or get it too hot. So we're ready to mix. All right, so we're gonna do 52 ounces because I'm using three ounces per square foot. We're going to be using the stone coat countertop art coat. The reason we're doing the art coat is because we're doing a white finish. The art coat has massive amounts of UV protection and therefore that's why we're going to use it. All right. It is a one to one ratio. So we're going to add part B first. The reason we do part B is you'll notice as I pour, Part B is quite a bit more fluid, I guess you would call it, less viscous, less thick, thinner, whatever adjective you want to use, than part A, all right? I get a more accurate reading when I put B in first because A will fall down through part B and it just gives me a quicker, more accurate reading. Also, because we've heated in front of the space heater, it's really made a quite a bit more fluid and it's gonna mix up so much easier. We're gonna mix for two minutes. Start off with your mixer very slow. You don't wanna really entrain a lot of air. Don't cause a vortex to develop and you'll keep the bubbles at a minimum. Also, another thing that you don't want to do is get your paddle to break the surface of your material. If you do that, what happens is you really start bringing in air to your mixture. So keep that paddle below the surface. All right, so once I mix for two minutes, what I do, and it really does help, is I'll take a, scrape, a scraper and I will scrape my edges and then take that material and hand stir it. Now, the reason I do this instead of dumping it into several different buckets is one, I don't wanna waste my t material by transferring it into another bucket. So what I'm doing is taking the material that's on the edges or on the sides of your buckets that haven't been properly or thoroughly mixed and I'm taking them and incorporating that into my product. Now, as long as we've been in business, we've never had a countertop with sticky spots, and this is the reason. We're making sure every bit of that material in that bucket is properly and thoroughly mixed. So one way to tell if you're mixing your product correctly is after we pour our product out of the bucket, we turn our buckets upside down for about two days. Then what happens is we're able to pull the material out. And 
our buckets are almost, well, they're as clean as when we started. And the way we check, run our hand through there, there's no sticky spots on the sides of our bucket. If you're consistently having sticky areas in your bucket, what that should be telling you is you're not thoroughly and properly mixing your product. All right, so the finish that they want for this countertop is going to be the ever so popular white marble. Um, but this one particular uh, recipe, they don't want bling in it, but they do want to have just a tiny bit of shimmer. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna do most of my color is going to be white opaque dye, which is the Alumalite dye that we sell on our website. And then I'm gonna come in with white mica powder. And that's just gonna give me just enough shimmer without doing the whole bling type of finish. So what I like to do anytime that I use mica powders, we have a new product and it's called uh, the epoxy dispersion fluid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of make a slurry. And what that's going to do is going to allow the um, mica powders to be mixed and dissolve really well in the epoxy and I don't, I won't get any of those little dry spots um, that you get when sometimes you mix up dry mica powders into your epoxy. So I'll put about two capfuls and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do about 16 ounces of the white metallic powder. I don't really measure guys, I'll tell you that right now. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it because I want the uh, color to be very opaque. So I'll just kinda mix that up to a kind of a paste. Now if you're using these plastic cups like I use, you'll see that there's a little lip right at the bottom. You wanna be really careful and make sure you get all that dry powder out of that lip and stir it up really well before you pour your epoxy in. A lot of times if you use mica powders and you notice after you've poured the mica powder out or after you pour the epoxy, you'll get these little starburst looking uh, designs. And what that is, is mica powder that's not been fully dissolved. And as the epoxy starts to move, you'll see those little starbursts show up. The dispersion helps prevent that. Now you can see how easily the mica powders are mixing now into the epoxy. As I stir, the way I stir, instead of just stirring, I go down and I pull it up so that I bring that material to the top. Also, I like to scrape my edges on my cup as well. All right, that easy. Now, I wanna show you guys what I mean about opaqueness. You can see that I cannot see through, I can't see through the mica down to the grain of the stick. That's how I know that my color is going to be very opaque. All right, gonna pour a little accent. This is gonna be the color for our uh, veins. The rest, I'm going to tint with the dye. Again, I want this to be very opaque. Okay, so for my accent, I know that from the uh, photos that they sent me, their inspiration photos, the gray that we're gonna use is going to be a very, very um, light gray. Nothing in your face really bold and loud. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tint white again, which I guess I could have tinted the whole thing and then just poured the white in here, but that would have been way too easy. Then I'm gonna come in with our black opaque dye. And because the black can easily take over, I'm gonna put a little bit on the table, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit at a time until I get the color that I want. Now what I wanna do is compare it. I think I want it a little darker than that, but not much, we're almost there. Again, very tiny amount.
Mm, I'm gonna go just a hair darker because I know once I mix it on the surface, it will get a little bit lighter. Okay, I think I'm there. All right, there we go. There's our two colors. Okay, so we're getting ready to pour. I'm gonna come in with my white opaque and I'm gonna just randomly lay it down. Really not making any kind of a pattern. Come over here and do our little side table here. All right, so I'm gonna leave some in the bucket just for later. All right, now this is our mica powder, our white mica powder. Stir it one more time since it's been sitting in the cup a few minutes. Now we're gonna lay it down. Just start kind of filling in. I'll let that sit there for a little bit. All right, so what you can do now is several things. You can come in here and you can trial this. You could use a Bondo spreader. You could use your hand. Uh, you could use a roller. It all kind of depends on what you want the finish to look like. I really do like to use a brush or a Bondo spreader and uh, because it's kind of the way I can meld it. What you really want to pay attention to is not to over meld your colors too much because then you basically have made one color. You want separation in the two colors. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to take this and just do kind of a cross hatch making sure I get all that material on my surface. Now I'm not worried about my edges at this point. I don't want to push too much of that material off the edge. Again, I'm being very careful not to over meld. If I see there's big areas of white, I may grab a little bit of that mica powder and pull it over. I've got plenty of working time with this product, so I'm not in a hurry at all. All right, so once I get the material on the surface, I'm gonna come back and start addressing my edges. Now, I like to use my hand also when we get to this point. So the reason we want this epoxy to roll over and under is so that we don't develop these drips right on the edge. So by me adding epoxy first with my hand, it's gonna encourage that epoxy to roll. Epoxy likes to flow where epoxy has already been. All right, so once I have the surface entirely covered, what I'll do now is kind of step back and it's real important that you step back and you kind of see if there's big pockets of color that maybe you wanna break up. And if so, that's where you can get into your more detail. So right here, I see quite a bit of that pearl so I'm gonna pick up some of the white. I'm gonna cross hatch through that pearl just a little bit because I don't want any color to just jump out. I don't want big pockets of this pearl. I want it to all be very, very, very soft. So that's how when I come back and look at it, and it's like I said, it's important that you step back because your eye will see things at a distance that you're not gonna see up close. Now I saved a little bit of the white in the bucket just in case I needed. So I'm getting a little dry on my edges. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that white and help me get those edges. Okay, everything's spread out. We'll torch it, get rid of all the bubbles. All right, guys, honestly, this can be a finish all on its own. You don't have to put veins. This is absolutely gorgeous. But I know the customer wants very slight veining and that's what she's gonna get. This is a little trick for you guys. If you want to do veins, but you also want to create some depth, you can actually come in and create veins with white. Okay, you're not really going to see them as distinct as your gray, but you will, your eye will catch them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here with a stick and I'm just going to start laying down veins. Now these are going to be so incredibly soft that you're really not going to see them because as they start as the epoxy continues to move, everything's gonna soften out, but it really is gonna create a really cool illusion. Now, because I have my table sitting or my, um, I guess you would call my addition, kind of bumped up, what I wanna do is create an illusion that the this is one complete piece of stone. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna jump and follow it. So as these are put together, it's gonna look like there's one seam. Like I said, these are gonna be so very soft, 
you're really not gonna see them until you get really close up. We'll probably even do this once again before we're done. So I still have some of the epoxy in my bucket. All right, so now the time for the gray veins. I'm gonna give you guys a earth shattering pro tip. You're gonna love this, guys. So I want to be able to create very thin, very distinct lines. Well, a lot of times when we use our stick, we'll get drips or big blobs. So I wanna show you something that is so cool. This is how simple this is. You're gonna take your accent color, which is my gray, pour it in a bag. I'm gonna save a little bit in the cup, just in case I need it. All right, I'm gonna try to get all, as much as the air out that I can. Get it to the edge. I'm gonna cut a very small hole. Now, like I said, I want very thin veins. So I may have to adjust this, we'll see. Oop, there we go, nope, we're gonna try it again. This is one of those bags that have a square bottom. I would tell you guys not to get that kind of bag. I didn't realize that's what it was when I got it. All right, see if we can make this work. All right, get everything down. You can tell I don't cook, guys. I'm certainly not a baker. All right, so here we go. All right, so get that air out. So we'll just start flowing. There it goes. And here we go. Gonna jump over. All right. Then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna follow that again. And then I'm gonna break off. Whoops. And then I'm gonna come and kind of follow it over here. I don't think I'm gonna come in. Now I know that they wanted very little veining. They do not want much veining at all. So I think I'm gonna come over on this edge. Kind of bleed in there. All right. Now see some of these I have bigger areas which I kind of like because I'm actually gonna hit this with some alcohol and it's gonna give me a really cool look. Now I'm gonna kind of flow that. That'll also kind of run into that vein. Okay. I like this. Now this is gonna be a very, very, very soft vein. I'm gonna actually kind of blend it with my finger because I want this to kind of be a soft, soft vein. So I'm gonna make it very, very soft. Here we go. And don't always start your veins from the same area. Start one side, this side, start next time, maybe start it on this side. Make sure I got all my air out. All right, so <clears throat> let me work with these veins a little bit, see if we can soften some of them out. Now, some of these veins I want to be, all right, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start softening some of these veins out, bring them over my edge. I'm barely using any pressure. I'm just letting that brush very softly go over the top. All right, now we're gonna hit it with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Now you wanna be really careful that you don't get too much alcohol on your surface because you'll cause those veins just to get really blurry. So I'm gonna set my sprayer, not at a super fine mist, but I don't want really hard drips. I'm gonna come up nice and high and I'm just gonna kinda of hit those veins. Cause them to have just a little bit of organic movement, not a lot. Just a tiny bit. Now you can also see what the alcohol does is when it comes over the top of the mica powder, it gives some really pretty effects. All right, so now what I wanna do is come out, come back and give a little bit of detail to my veins. So I put a little bit more of the gray, I mean of the black uh, opaque dye, 
and I'm going to add it to my gray and I'm going to get a darker color. Have it a little darker. That's what I'm going for. But this time I'm going to be very specific on where I put it. So I'm going to come in with my stick and I'm just going to kind of very softly draw in. And I'm not following the vein exactly. I'm kind of coming off that vein a little bit. And I'm not adding a lot of color. All right, then I'm going to come in with my alcohol. Hit it just a little bit. Cause a little bit of movement. And you don't have to do this with every single vein. Again, it looks like I'm adding a lot of alcohol, but I'm really, really not. Just enough to make those veins seem a little more realistic. Now I'm going to add some color here because I want this to drip over the edge. So I'll come back and play with that just a little bit. I like that, how I split that color. Okay, now some of these veins are very soft. Some of them are a little more bold. All right, so now what we're gonna do is come in with some spray paint. Got a little bit of spray paint, white, all right. So now we're going to come in and get even a little more detailed. Now I'm kind of opening up that vein a little bit as I drag my stick, kind of giving it a little bit of character. Now you do not want to put too much spray paint. If you get too much spray paint on your stick, that spray paint's gonna widen out and it's gonna take over your vein. Okay. Now watch what happens when you hit it with the alcohol, with the spray paint. Now look at that white. See how now that vein has a character. All right, so we're gonna come over here. Same thing. This is also where you can lighten your veins up if you've gotten too much dark color and you wanna lighten those veins, you can do it this way. Now you don't want your alcohol to sit too long before you hit it with the alcohol. You don't want your veins to sit too long, the spray paint, before you hit it with your alcohol because then you won't get those really cool designs. Many times you have quite a bit of spray paint, you can just kind of use that to your advantage kind of move it out and that'll be a fun vocal uh, focal point right there so when you hit it with the alcohol look how pretty that is okay so remember I told you guys to step back and look at your work from a distance and your eye will catch things that you really don't see close up so what I did is I took a step back and to me in my opinion I think it's too busy, I think, for what the customer wants. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to mute out some of these veins uh, or take them out, I guess you would call. Make them softer so maybe they're just background. All right, so I'm gonna take my brush with just the white and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kinda really work that out. And when I do, now my brush is dirty. So I'm gonna come in here, offload my brush Come back in here, 
soften it down. Now that I've kind of taken it out, I'm going to come cross hatch it, hatch it. So now I've made it very, very soft. And I'm going to kind of blend. All right, so now we got very soft area right there. It's not so hard on my eye. All right, I think I'm going to do that as well. I like that. You like that better? Okay. I think I'm going to do that as well on this vein here. Let me know what you guys would do. Are you agreeing with me? Uh, let me know maybe which veins you would take out. All right, so again, I'm going to come in with uh, my white. And the reason I'm kind of preloading with some uh, epoxy is that I, so I don't pull off too much of that material. So I'm going to come in here, grab it, pull it off. Torch it a little bit. It'll make the epoxy a little more fluid and a little easier to work with. Off camera, my husband is telling me that he absolutely loves the softness of the veins. This is the good thing about working with your spouse sometimes. And I tend to agree with him right now. So what we've decided to do, we as in him, is that we are going to take all these veins and we're going to soften them all out. Then make an another decision and see if we'll come back with just a little bit more detail. All right, so here we go. Loading my brush up. I'm just come over here. Now remember our first pass, we're going to kind of pull the material off. Okay, that's the first thing. And don't put it into your white. Have yourself a cup that you can offload. All right, now you'll come in. And you'll start softening the vein out. All right, so I'm going to hit it with just a tiny bit of alcohol just to kind of get that to move a little bit. There we go. Okay, guys, what do you think? I love it. My husband was right there. I said it on camera. Everyone can see that I took his advice. Um, and I could walk away right now. We could leave this as a very, very soft finish. But you know me, I want to add just a little bit more detail. And he's shaking his head behind the camera. So I want to know what you would do. Would you leave it like this? Or would you come in and create very small detail? So this is what it's going to look like. I added a little bit of gray spray paint. Actually, it's called granite just a tiny bit to that vein. And I'm gonna do it just in a few spots. And guys, you have to really make sure that you're just coming in with a tiny bit of spray uh, of the paint on your stick. So I'm gonna be very detailed where I want this. And I'm not even gonna go down the whole vein. It's just gonna be ever so often Okay, and then I'm going to hit it with just a very tiny amount of alcohol. Just to give it a little bit of movement. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in with a little bit of white. To create that depth. And I'm even going to use the same stick. Bring a little bit of white right here. And then we're done. All right, so see that little bit? I'll bring a little white in right here a little bit. some here.
Okay, guys, I'm gonna stop. For one, I love it. Two, my husband's about to pinch my ears off because I won't leave it alone. And I love it. So again, leave me comments. What would you do? Would you have added a little more detail? Would you have not added any detail at all? Or do you like it when it was the very first before we made them very soft? Leave me comments. I'm very interested to see what you guys would do. All right, so we're gonna leave this alone, wait 24 hours, I'll come back tomorrow. We'll sand it, we'll apply a clear flood coat. We'll let that sit for 24 hours and then we're gonna come back and apply the ultimate top coat. All right guys, see you tomorrow. All right, it's been 24 hours. Our color coat is dry and it's time to put on our clear flood coat. We'll sand with 220, clean it with isopropyl alcohol, use three ounces per square foot, let it dry, then come back and do the ultimate top coat. When doing the edges, I like to take the pad off the holder and use just my hand so that I don't burn through my edges and very carefully work on my edges. All right, so we have the material mixed. Now, like most of you know, I usually add diamond dust or gold dust to my flood coat, but not this time. The uh, owner doesn't want any kind of bling, which I think is absolute um, against the law that we should have diamond dust, but here we go. It's a little bit cool, so I'm gonna torch before I trial it. That just helps it to become a little more fluid and easier to trial out. As I trial, I'm gonna push it to the edge, but I'm not gonna go over the edge just yet. All right, so a lot of the times you notice I do use my hands, but when I'm doing a larger area, especially if I'm just doing a flood coat, I will use our trial. And this is a 1-8 by one eighth inch square notch trial. And it's gonna leave just the right amount of material on the surface that I need. All right, so once everything is level on top, I'll come back with my hand and that's when I'll come in and address my edges. Again, this is the same material, the stone coat countertop art coat that we used on the color coat. We do have a video available that shows in depth how to get a flawless flood coat and we'll link that in the video descriptions. Again, I'm using my hand to take that epoxy, roll it all the way over and underneath. Once our flood coat is down, we'll torch three times, leaving about three to five minutes in between each torching. All right, guys, so as far as the epoxy portion of this countertop, we are done. The owner, I'm not sure if they're gonna want matte or gloss, so we're not gonna include the application of that process in this video. However, we will link two videos, both gloss and matte techniques on how to apply the UTC in the video description. All right, guys, so what do you think? Do you like it? I really wish that you guys could see this in person. It is very hard to uh, video white and really capture the beauty of it. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel. Guys, we have tons of people that watch our videos, but they're not subscribed. So help us get our numbers up by actually hitting the 
thumbs up, and subscribing. Also, if you hit the little bell, you'll get future notifications on every single time we do a finish. We also do lives every Tuesday night now on YouTube. So check that out, seven o'clock central time here on our YouTube channel. Check out our website, rk3designs.com for all of these products that we used. Also, more pictures of any of the products that we do are on our website along with all of the products that we used in that piece. So check that out. All right, guys, until next time, you know what to do. Don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.